Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching The Legend of Korra. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episodes three and four of season two of The Legend of Korra. I don't trust Unalak. Don't trust him at all. I didn't trust him at the end of the first episode. I was like, hopefully that was meant in a nice way. The little thing is like, I have plans for you. That's how it felt. But I was like, well, maybe he's just dramatic. I have no idea. I don't think he has her best intentions at heart. I think that he's using her to push his own agenda. Um, he wants, like, I think probably some conformity with the Northern Water Tribe and the Southern Water Tribe and probably take over the Southern Water Tribe. Um, I, I already am kind of annoyed with the Tonrock and Alak brotherly situation, um, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's that way for a good reason. And, you know, Tonrock really did not want Korra to go with her uncle uh, into the South Pole. And I was like, no, she needs to connect spiritually. So I do think that, like, something good came out of it, that she is able to connect with the Avatar state to the spiritual world. But, you know, with, with Korra, she really wanted to fight the spirits, just like she wants to always do. She just wants to fight. She wants to train to be the best fighter possible. And, you know, the thing about being the Avatar is you also have to be this bridge between the spiritual world. And I think that that's going to be the harder part for her because it always has been. Like, she hasn't been able to connect to the spiritual world. I think it's really important that they do establish that she is very emotional and that she she really is, like, looking for a fight most of the time and that she has some aggression in her. And it's pent up. Like, she's been kept in a bubble and then she was kept in Republic City and Avatar Island and then her dad trying to say, like, no, you can't go, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I think for her, like, she really just needs to expand her horizons. Like, she needs to experience new places. And and that's why I was excited about her possibly going to the other air temples for training is because, like, that's what she needs to do is experience the world. And, you know, I would get very frustrated if I had to be kept in a bubble and I couldn't, you know, go and see the world and go on trips and experience new things and new cultures and new flavors. Like, come on. My favorite thing when I travel is food. Food, food, food. It's like the best. Um, so I, I get her frustration. I get her anger. It drives me crazy at the same time because I'm just like, girl, quit being a brat. But I'm also like, use your words. Say your words. Even when she does, though, she gets ignored. You know, and it's just like, stop telling me what to do. I can make my own choices. And I really, I was sad about Tenzin and her deciding that she didn't want Tenzin to help her with her spiritual training. Because um, I do think, you know, and it has been said that airbending and like being spiritual are, you know, hand in hand. I don't know. I Tenzin tries so hard to be Aang. And I love that he's more like Katara than he is Aang. But like, you know, he's not always the best teacher for her. And I do think someone else giving her a little bit more freedom to express herself or go try something that maybe everyone else doesn't want her to do because they think it's dangerous. You know, I, I think that that's like the one good takeaway from Unalak is that even though it's for his own agenda, she's experiencing what that's like. Now, of course, there's always repercussions to that. And I, I, I don't know if she will experience those repercussions anytime soon, but she looked very sad at the end of the last episode um, when she kind of like realized that Unalak wasn't honorable in, in what he said. It wasn't just to reconnect the Southern Water Tribe to the spiritual. It was also possibly to take over and 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 make it his own and, and make it something that he thinks it should be, which I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm 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 not big on conquerors and I'm 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 not big on uh author author I can't even get it out. But I don't like it. I don't like it. My, my, my mouth was not going to work to get that word out. Authoritarian. There we go. But when you really have to stop and think to say something, should you even be saying it out loud? <laughs> like, <laughs> if the word is too hard, should you be using it? <laughs> I am not the authority on that. I'll tell you that much. So the the brotherly fight between Tonrock and Unalak, I totally get... I don't like, but what's great is that we have these other brothers where we have, you know, Bolin and, and Mako, and they're great. Like, that's how brothers should be. And then you have the brotherly, sisterly relationships with, like, Tenzin and, and Kaya and Bumi, and then the weird kids. Unalak's kids are 
We need more. We might, they might be super powerful. They might be the coolest kids in the world. But like considering that, that those kids are his children and now he wants to take over the Southern Water Tribe, like there's a lot of control there. And they might all of a sudden break out of their shells and just be wild, crazy people. And I, I would love that. But I don't like Bolin with her only because of her being controlling. And uh, it, it doesn't set well with me. Like he needs to be with somebody who's fun because he's fun. Like, don't let somebody take your fun away, ever. If, if you feel like you cannot be yourself or you cannot be your, your fun-loving self, get out. Don't change yourself for anybody. That might have been more personal than I meant it to be. <laughs> anyway, so, but, like, let's, let's, let's talk about Tenzin and Bumi and Kaya, you know, and, and now he's traveling the world with his siblings. I'm not upset. I'm not upset. I want more from Boomy because he looked so cool on that ship at the end of season one. And I was like, I want the wild man. And like, he seems to be just kind of like, like that older brother. Um, so I, I want to see Boomy in full effect because the fact that he's not a bender, I mean, some of the best characters on the show have been non-benders, you know, like your Mays, your Tai Lees, your Sokka's, your Suki's, you know, so... I'm ready for Boomy. I really am. And Kaya, I would love to see her in action. And obviously she's a waterbender. I think that she's definitely that older sister that would pick on Tenzin. And I, I absolutely love that. And I would love to see that relationship continue, grow. Obviously, you don't want to just like have, you know, them picking on Tenzin all the time, but them discovering that like, you know, he's grown and then see them grow and like kind of get to know those characters a little bit. But like, I always do this where it's like the main character of the show isn't my main focus. It's always somebody else. And Janora, definitely connected to the spiritual world. She was called to the statue where all the avatars were when, when Korra uh, opened the portal. Um, like she had a moment before any of that even happened with the statues. So I am honed in on Janora. Oh my gosh. I am, I am so excited for that. I want her to be just like this prodigy or like, however, she masters airbending. Would she have to shave her head to get a tattoo? I don't know. I, I know that uh, I can't think of who the airbender avatar was before Aang, but she had a shaved head with the arrow. And I don't know if you necessarily have to do that, if you can just have your arrow showing. <laughs> I mean, I'm all about tradition, but I'd be like, can I? like i don't know stay warm during the winter would that be okay <laughs> yeah but i i feel like uh i feel like she is someone to keep an eye on Iki, of course is just always uh an interesting character and um yeah milo trying to take a lemur he's such a boy he's such a boy i i i don't think that there would be one young boy who saw a lemur and wasn't like gimme <laughs> so and then, of course, Pema, like, you know, uh, just being the mother of airbenders, she's she is one tough lady. And uh, I, I'm excited to see the baby like Rohan. I don't think we're going to get a lot from until he's a little bit older. And they had said that it was like six months after everything happened with Amon. So, you know, we at least have a six month old. So um, probably by the end of season four, we'll have like a two year old who can like summon a lion turtle. I don't know. I don't know. I'm making stuff up now. Uh, Korra and Mako, their relationship, you know, um, this is a weird Mako. Like, he's very supportive, and I like that, and, and as he should be. He shouldn't be telling her what to do or, like, even give his opinion on things if he's not sure. Um, but, you know, he should say, like, I'm supportive of any decision you make. And I don't know if she wants somebody to tell her what to do or not, but I feel like it does really have to ultimately come from her. She is the Avatar. She's the one that has to make those decisions. She's the one that is going to have to face things. So, you know, she's the one that has to sit and really think about the decision she has to make. She can't really, like, lean on Mako to make those decisions for her. Him being a cop was really interesting. Um, I feel bad for Bolin and not having, you know, Korra and Mako for his uh, pro-bending team. But um, maybe, maybe, I mean, now that he's in the Southern Water Tribe, maybe it's time to kind of like walk away from that and, 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 you know, be worldly and then come back and smash some people. I don't know. I just like feel really bad for Bolin. And, you know, lastly, uh, with Asami wanting to save future industries, I think that that is very noble of her. Um, I think that she probably got all the good parts of her father in her watching him do business because he seemed like he was probably a kind person before his wife was murdered. Um, but, uh, you know, her wanting to keep it afloat and, in in you know, developing the planes, I think is fantastic. Now, Varric, 
he is an interesting cat. Now, I was like, oh God, this guy's going to be annoying. And he's not. He is entertaining. I like him. I want to know more about him. I think he's going to be um, a very interesting character to watch because his mannerisms, the way he talks, the, 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 the way he speaks rather, like, you know, he's just like, like really boisterous. And then is just like this far from your face and is like, we got a deal. You know, like he's very eccentric. And I, I like that in a character that you don't have around all the time. Like if they had a whole show on him, I'd be like, I can't, but I do like the appearance that we have of him because they really could have gone heavy handed with it and had him like all over the episode and they didn't. But I am looking forward to more between him and Asami because one, I want her to do well. I want her to do well. It's like one of those things for like the non-benders in, in the show is like I always want them to excel at the thing that they uh, love or that they care about or they're passionate about. You know, I, I want I want her and her business to continue to thrive, even though, you know, her father is, I think, imprisoned. I think he might be there for a while. I wonder if the cabbage guy got out. They never revisited that. I feel like um, I, f I feel like we need justice for what was his name? Gan Long? Something like that. <laughs> which I guess is like a Chinese cabbage. And um, I, I like recently have started eating kimchi like every morning um, to help with my gut bacteria. Um, and uh, I, I need the cabbage guy. I need the cabbage guy. He needs to supply me. I need to get my, my kimchi fix because it is, uh, it's, it's, it's so helpful. It's so helpful. I, it's yummy stuff. Uh, but guys, now that I've shared that with you, uh, let's, let's get into this episode, these two episodes, um, because one, uh, I want to see more of Varric. I want to figure out what Unalak is up to. Um, and, uh, I'd say that like, I want Korra to, um, tap into the spiritual realm, but because it's the spirit book, I know she will. Um, but I, I, I don't, I want her to talk to Aang or, uh, another waterbender avatar, you know, to connect to them, to connect to the Southern Water Tribe, to connect, to figure out this, this weird dynamic between her father and her uncle. Uh, I think that that, that would be super helpful. And now, now that I know it's the, the spirit book, I am like avatar state every episode and a connection to the spiritual realm. Let, let's fight some, uh, angry spirits or connect to happy spirits. No co. I don't need co. He is not welcome here. And mostly because I've never seen Cora not make a face. So I'm pretty sure she can't keep a straight face. Like I said, how I couldn't and I would immediately just be dead. I feel like like now is not the time for her to meet Ko. <laughs> At all. <laughs> That's terrifying. But guys, super excited to get into this episode. So let's get into it. Roll the thing! Or whatever he said. <laughs> Yep. That's what I was thinking. Civil Wars Part 1. Civil Wars. Here we go. The Southern Water Tribe seems to have been built up quite a bit. Uh, I don't like it. This music is amazing, though. This composition. They're knocking it out of the park. You can't just imprison all of these people. You can't make them go into their home and then keep them from leaving. Now that you've opened the southern portal, we need to protect it from people who would do the spirits harm. I can protect it. I need you for something more important. There is another portal in the north. Once you open it, spirits and man will be able to move freely between the north and the south in a matter of seconds. Mm-hmm. With both portals open, our tribes will be united again. The world will be united again. I don't trust him. He might have good intentions, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> we miss Appa! <laughs> I haven't felt this at peace since... <gasps> oh, Boomy! <laughs> and it's over. <laughs> and it's over. Vacation Tenzin has finally decided to join us. It's so nice to get to spend more time with my family. Isn't that right, mm. my little Roha? He's so cute. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed having you two around. Has he? Reminds me of all those great vacations we took as kids with Dad. Boomy and I weren't on those great vacations. 
It was always just you and Dad. Yes, he's an airbender. What about the time he took us to Kiyoshi Island to ride the elephant koi? We weren't there. Aww. Oh, remember Ember Island? Those amazing sand palaces we built on the beach? You mean you built? Oh, no. We never saw the place. I could have sworn. <laughs> Aang. It's good to know Aang wasn't a perfect father. Morning, Uncle Boomy. Do you have a baby in there? <laughs> Where's your sister? Who? Iki. About this tall. I'm sure you know her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where's she at? There was a lemur fight, but the bison told us not to worry because a giant was coming. Then we almost got eaten by a shark squid. The shark squid? It appears my old nemesis has found me. Old nemesis? Were you and me low teasing your sister again? I don't know. What do you mean you don't Maybe. know? Yes. <laughs> it's such a sisterly relationship. She ran away. Iki couldn't have gone far. I'll find her. Commander Boomy reporting for duty. Search and rescue missions are my specialty. Fantastic. What do you say we all go together? I could use the help. When I get back, we'll take down that shark squid once and for all. Yeah! <laughs> the crazy child with the crazy uncle. Perfect. I know these last few days have been very troubling. Troubling is when I get that itchy rash that won't go away and Julie's not around to scratch it. This is shocking. But these kale cookies? Opposite. <laughs> Remind me to get the recipe later. <laughs> Unalak's already booted our chieftains out of their palace. How long before he starts telling us what kind of cookies we can eat? Probably it's a couple of not days. not the most important thing, Rhetorical but... Rhetorical question, Julie. You gotta keep up. Not to mention, I've got a cargo ship full of halibut that's rotting thanks to this harbor lockdown. Who wants to buy a ship full of stinking fish? Seriously, it's not rhetorical. I need to sell these fish. <laughs> he wants to show us how to restore balance with the spirits so they'll stop attacking. The only spirit I'm interested in restoring is our spirit of independence. Am I right, people? I'm with Eric. All Unalak is trying to do is make our tribes unified again. No, he wants control of our wealth. My wealth. And I like my wealth. I can tell. If Unalak doesn't pull his forces out, then we have no choice but to fight for our freedom. You want to start a war? Are you crazy? Mildly. Unalak started this, not us. Tell him how frustrated we all are. He'll listen to what the Avatar has to say. Really? Do it for me. I'll do it for the tribe. I cannot stop eating these things. <laughs> Look, we all know where this conflict is heading. We need to start preparing for war. Yeah, I mean, they can't be kept, like, confined in, like, homes and not able to leave. That's just ridiculous. I will hate to leave this quaint tribe. Is that true? I will not miss it at all. I hold immense dislike for the South. <laughs> Pull in. Laugh at my humorous quip. <laughs> Run. So, so funny. Get rid of them. They gets to go. You know, I'll be really sad when you have to leave. It's been really great getting to know He's you. He's not going with you. Really. But you will be coming with me to the north. No, he will not there be. There we will live the rest of our lives together in icy no. bliss. Nope. Nope. Foolish Bolin. Nope. 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 Marco! Nope. I'm so happy to see you! Save me! You all right, bro? No. No! No, I'm not all right. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to live in icy bliss with S. I don't want you to either. Uh, hey, if you're that unhappy, just break up with her. Yeah. Break up with her? You could do that? Yeah. yeah. Guys do it all the time. All the time. Wow. Just tell her you're not that into her anymore. Oh, no, no, I don't think she'd like mm -mm. that. Ending a relationship is kind of like pulling off a blood-sucking leech. You just gotta rip it off and get it over with. You'll feel a lot better afterwards, trust me. Tell her you're allergic to snow. <laughs> I'm lucky you're so good at breaking girls' hearts. <laughs> Cora, better watch out. Ooh. No, it's just, uh... Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Clocked him right there. There was a meeting at my parents' house. A lot of Southerners feel like their tribe is being invaded. I'm uniting, not invading. Doesn't feel like it. I'm just afraid if something doesn't change, there could be a civil war. If the water tribes were at war, the dark spirits would thrive off this negative energy. And the world will be thrown into a battle between spirits and man. Maybe you shouldn't do it then. How do we stop it? We. This is a war only the Avatar can prevent. She's trying. She's literally trying. I don't I'm like him. I'm usually the one starting fights. 
I don't know how to stop them from happening. It's very true. As the Avatar, you must remain neutral in this conflict. Showing favoritism will not help our tribes find unity. You're being manipulated, girl. Maybe Tenzin was right. Maybe I'm not ready to be the Avatar. Tenzin lacked faith in you. But I have no doubt you will become the most admired Avatar the world has ever known. Tenzin did not have a lack of faith in her. Oh, I hate him. He's so manipulative. Hmm. Who threw those? <laughs> They're kids. Come on. Pick on a water bender your own size. Yep, this is how it starts. Everyone, calm down. You're all part of the same tribe. Start acting like it. You're taking their side. I'm not taking anyone's side. Oh. You are the worst avatar ever. Everyone. Walk away from this. They're not worth our trouble. Go back to your homes. Yeah, force doesn't make people stop doing things. Iki, where are you? Over here, Dad. <laughs> Just kidding. It's me. Duh. Why would Iki run off like this? Oh, it's probably my fault. I'm guessing you've been so busy with your duty to Republic City that you forgot about your duty to your kids. <laughs> Duty. Wow. What are you, five years old? Kaya, you're right. I haven't been spending enough time with them. I wish I could be as good a father as Dad was to us. Tenzin, your problem is you're exactly like Dad. Uh. He was so focused on saving the world and doing his duty. Don't laugh. He never <laughs> had time for us. He always had time for you, though. Yeah. His precious little airbender. Dad loved us all equally. Why are we even talking about this? Because you seem to have some grandiose delusion that we had a perfect, happy-go-lucky childhood. We didn't. We need to keep moving if we want to find Iki before dark. Oh, he doesn't want to talk. There, Boomy? Classic airbender technique. Cutting and running when things get tough. Ugh. Yeah, did Dad teach you that move? <laughs> oh, this dynamic is interesting. I like it. My tribe's about to go to war, and I'm supposed to stop it, but will anyone listen to me? And I didn't ask for my father's help. Can't he just let me be the Avatar? Do you want advice, or am I just supposed to listen? <laughs> Still not clear on that. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. It's good to ask. Always ask for clarification. My dad just gets me all worked up. How about you take a break from all this Avatar stuff, and we go out for a quiet dinner? Just the two of us. Oh. Sometimes it's great to just be a normal person. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Isn't this fun, huh? Well, Lynn, you gotta break up with her. We never get to spend enough time together, just the five of us. <laughs> you guys gotta save me. I thought you were breaking up with her. Yeah, what happened What there? happened to ripping off the leech? <laughs> Anytime I bring up the subject, she threatens to freeze me in a block of ice and feed me to dolphin piranhas. It's love, huh? Why didn't you warn me your cousin had the power to reach into my heart and crush my soul with her bare hands? Uh, cause I thought it was pretty obvious. <laughs> I'm very bad at reading people, you should know that by now! <sighs> I mean, I thought it too. You know, this reminds me of a search and rescue mission I commanded years ago. Uh, here we go. For five days, we scoured that beast of a mountain, fighting our way through three typhoons. Finally, we found hey, a huddled in a cave, seconds from death. I piled all 12 of those poor souls on my back and single-handedly carried them down the mountain to safety. Tenzin. How exactly is that supposed to help us find Iki? It's supposed it to take supposed up time. To yeah. Me. Clearly, you know nothing about being a leader of men. That's probably why the Avatar fired you. I'm sick of your far-fetched tales. Well, I may have thrown in an extra typhoon or two for dramatic effect, but... Quit arguing and bring that lantern over here. I found footprints. It's interesting to see Aang's kids and, like, how they have different perceptions of what their childhood was. Follow me. This will get us down 50 times faster. Oh. It's pitch black and the rocks are slippery. You're going to hurt yourself. If I can do it, it should be no problem for a couple of benders. Fine. Fair enough. Oh, poor Boomy. You were right, Boomy. That was faster. At least 50 times faster, by my calculations. <laughs> <laughs> if you need an airlift down, just say the word. Just cannonball and splash him. 
I've got everything under control. Oh, don't be proud. Oh. Dad send you to talk to me? Cora, what's going on between you two? Ask Dad. I've tried, but he won't talk about it. Hmm, they have that in common. I found out Dad's been lying to me my whole life. Unalak told me everything. How Dad and Tenzin kept me trapped down here while I trained. How Dad got banished from the North. All I ever wanted to be was the Avatar. But everyone keeps holding me back, even my own parents. Mm. Unalak's the only one who believes in me. Uh, That's not true, Yeah, that, that definitely is not true. Varric's been plotting a rebellion against Unalak. He asked your father to join, and... Dad is part of a rebellion? I don't know, but I don't want you getting caught in the middle of it. I'm already in the middle of it. Cora, stop! Ugh. Cora! She's gonna Uncle! destroy this rebellion from happening. Uncle! Can't tell who's who with the hoods on. I have no idea. Turn around, Avatar, and pretend you didn't see anything. Leave Unalak and go. We can still avoid a war. No, we can't. Oh. Get him out of here! We're all part of the same tribe. I don't want to hurt you. Huh. I mean, like, she's not good at negotiating, but she is really good at fighting. Okay, girl! You said you didn't want to hurt them! Oh god, you're gonna hurt him! Why did you do this, Dad? Who are you? Where's my father? He wouldn't help us. He's a traitor, just like you. Thank you for saving my life. I don't blame them for rebelling, though. They don't want this. You can't just lock them away. That will only make the South angrier. Let them stand trial for what they did. Every Water Tribe citizen deserves that right. Yes. Very well. Okay, good. I told you those rocks were slippery. Aww. You're lucky you didn't kill yourself. You done with the lecture, Mom? <laughs> You're still trying to prove you can do everything a bender can. Well, you can't. Deal with it. You don't get to tell me what I can and can't do. Deal with that. Gosh, these older sibling rivalries are so interesting. You're the oldest of us, but you always acted like the youngest. I had to become the responsible one. You think you're the responsible one? <laughs> Where were you after Dad died and Mom was all alone? Because I packed up and moved my whole life to be with her. You two have no idea how it feels to have the future of an entire culture on your shoulders. That's very true. Oh, boo-hoo. Must have been real hard for you, flying around the world with Dad riding elephant koi all day. That's what this is all about. That's what it's always been about. You think you're some savior who has to carry on Dad's legacy. Who else is going to do it? How about all of us? Yeah, we're Aang's kids too. We never should have come on this vacation. Actually, this is probably for the better. I can't be around you two right now. Go back to the temple and see if Iki returned. I'll keep looking out here. Fine. 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 <laughs> Fine. I like how Civil War really is the theme, whether it is between tribes or family members. We have Korra and her dad and Tenz and his siblings, and then of course the tribes. Interesting. Is it okay if I come in? We heard what happened. Are you okay? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad you weren't there. My brother and I have our differences, but I would never attack him. I'm sorry for thinking you had anything to do with the rebels. I'm the one who should apologize. After I saw the Southern Lights return, I was so proud of you. I never should have held you back. When your father and I found each other, all we wanted was to live a simple life and raise a family. But then we discovered you were the Avatar. We knew one day the world would need you, and you wouldn't need us anymore. Mom, Dad, of course I still need you. You always need your parents. It just changes. Tonrock, Senna, you are under arrest and will stand trial. Trial? What? For what? For conspiring to assassinate me. Ah! <laughs> oh, they're doing that end of the episode thing, but I'm going to watch the next part.
You're making a mistake. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you're doing this to your own family. I've appointed Judge Hota to oversee the trial. He's the most fair and honorable man I know. Mm. Uncle, my parents had nothing to do with the men who attacked you. So we should have nothing to worry about. I hope so. I don't like Unalak. Where's Varric? We should have closed our deal an hour ago. Would you relax? This place is great. And the best part about it, Eska doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> oh my god. She does now. I wasn't hiding, hey. <laughs> I'm not on the hunt for you. Currently. <laughs> Currently. Yikes. We search for Varric. He is a traitor to the Water Tribe, along with our aunt and uncle. Cora's parents were arrested? Your powers of deduction are impressive. <laughs> yeah, he's a cop. Varric's not here. Very well. <laughs> Desna, let us continue our search elsewhere. Is he in the platypus bear? Boyfriend, bow to me when I exit. Yes, yes, my sweet koala otter. You are so cute when you grovel. Oh, she's gotta go. She's gotta go. Don't let her treat you that way. Yeah. I tried to break up with her, but Mako gave me terrible advice. Wait, how are your girl problems my fault? You need to be honest with her. Honesty is for fools, kid. He's Eric, not. If you want to ditch this, he girl, is. Make yourself scarce. Disappear like I did. Where are you? Somewhere <laughs> Unalak will never find me. Inside Ping Ping. Ping Ping. Oh my gosh. I cute. was just kidding, but it you felt like it out. stood out animation wise. Not until I know it's absolutely 157% safe. 157%, yep. Ah, thank you, Julie. She's in there? <laughs> Julie never leaves my side. <laughs> What do you have to pee? You forgot the honey. Sorry, sir. There isn't any in here. No honey? We're in a bear for crying out loud. It's not Winnie the Pooh. I got a little something for you round back. <laughs> Unalak's rigged this trial, no doubt about it. So I need you to make sure my trusty rebels stay out of prison. What's the money for? Bribery, of course. I think I catch your drift, Varric Bear. I, I like Varric. Let me just say that. I, I really like Varric. Go bother someone else. You two are worse than Kaya and Boomy. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody here? Icky. Oh, thank goodness. Juniper lightning bug. Secret tunnel. This is going to be a civilized breakfast. Oh my god! I die! Be quiet and listen up! We are thankful for this super yummy food and for being the bestest new friends in the world. But we are most thankful because Milo and Janora aren't here because they <laughs> stink. Milo for sure. Oh, hi daddy. Do I have to go now? Actually, is there room for one more? Aww. Hanging out with the baby bison. You can sit next to Blueberry Spice Head. Blueberry Spice Head. Nice to meet you, Blueberry Spice Head. <laughs> and that's Princess Rainbow. And that's Twinkle Star Child. And that's Juniper Lightning Bug. Okay. They're my new brothers and sisters. Can they be my new brothers and sisters too? Maybe, but only if they say it's okay. Oh. Uh huh. No, no, he's nice. <laughs> they say it's okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. A tea party with baby flying bison. <laughs> I die. We're good to go. I gave all the money to some guys over there. I told them to take care of it, and then I winked. <laughs> Pretty sure they got the message. Why was Bolin in charge of that? Uh-huh. Oh, Asami. Judge Hota, residing. <sighs> Man, I should have paid him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think? <laughs> oh, God, he's such a goober. According to Unalak's testimony, you attended a meeting where Varric tried to incite a civil war. Is that true? Yes. And where exactly did this meeting take place? My parents' house. Your Honor, if I may. May what? May I declare a mistrial? Sit down. Hey, you goober. Stay quiet. <laughs> I've heard all I need to. I'll return shortly with my decision. Very fair and impartial. So fair. I was wondering if we could talk. I grant you permission to speak freely. Oh, good. 
You know, when we first met, there was this crazy spark. I'm starting to feel like that spark is fading. I agree. It is as if a great chasm has formed between us and nothing can bridge it. Oh. Nothing that is except marriage. Oh, uh, mm, run. run. Oh, a collar. You may express your joy through tears. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. This is really tight. <sighs> He's not a pet. He doesn't need a collar. Senna, please step forward. I have found you innocent. You are free to go. Okay, let's see how it goes for her father. On the charge of treason, you are all found guilty. The punishment for this crime is death. Pardon? Oh, this is way different than Avatar. <laughs> oh, man. You can't do this! You take their lives and I'll take yours! Cora, calm down. I'll talk to him. I know I promised to respect whatever decision you made, but I must ask you to reconsider. Show these men and my brother mercy. Is that a plan for him to say that in front of everybody so he looks like the good guy? Very well. I'll change their punishment. Your lives will be spared, but you will live them out in prison. Seems wrong. <laughs> you like that, don't you, Blueberry Spice? <laughs> I want one! You know, I could get used to it here. We should have Uncle Boomy and Aunt Kaya come visit. I bet they'd like it, too. Mm. They'll only spoil our good mood. What do you mean? Aunt Kaya is super nice and always asks me how I'm feeling. And Uncle Boomy is like the funniest person in the world. But what about Milo? You never know what's going to come out of his mouth. Mm -mm. And Jinora can be so sweet and gentle. And mean. Being part of a family is hard, huh, Dad? Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. Oh, come back. I need a hug. Oh. But I guess the nice part about a family is they'll always be there for you. Even though Twinkle Starchild and Princess Rainbow fight, they still love each other. Mm -hmm. That's very wise of you, Iki. Sure is. We should probably head back, huh? We can't hide in this cave forever. We'll come back and visit Blueberry Spicehead. I know you really bonded with her. Yes, Aww. I'd like that. <laughs> what a great moment between him and Iki. It's okay, Mom. I hate feeling so helpless. I know. What are you gonna do? Hopefully nothing stupid and rash and emotional. What, what would the judge possibly be able to do? Change the sentences? Cora! Oh, man. Oh, man. He could have died. Jeez, Naga. Let's chat. What do you want? It's not about what I want. It's about what Naga wants. And she'd like you to let my father out of prison. I was just following Unalak's orders. Uh-huh. <laughs> Unless you want to be Naga's afternoon snack, you better keep talking. Okay. I, I've worked for your uncle for years. He said he needed everyone to think the trial was fair. Mm -hmm. Then why did he have you free my mother and change your sentence? He's trying to keep you on his side, but he also wants your father out of the way, just like when he got your father banished. What do you mean he got my father banished? Nothing. Oh, no, no, no. Talking. Yeah, you better keep talking. Oh, that snake. What a snake. Hey there, Dad. You're looking well. Hey, me. Look, uh, I'm sorry I didn't turn out to be an airbender like you hoped, but I've tried my best to keep the world safe. Hope I made you proud. <laughs> of course I'd be proud of you, Boomy. I, I was just, uh, cleaning off Dad's statue. <coughs> it's so dusty in here. Thanks, Kaya. You always know when I need a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Unalak's a liar and a traitor. I've been trying to tell you that from the get-go. <laughs> get out of the platypus bear. I found out the truth about my dad's banishment. Unalak hired the barbarians to attack their tribe. Then he told them to hide in the spirit force, knowing my dad would go after them. Unalak wanted your dad out of the way so he could become chief. It was a setup. Just like the whole trial. That is a long game to play, too. I'm busting my father and the rebels out of jail. I need your help. 
If you do this, there's no going back. Yeah, you have to think about it. Will you help me or not? Of course I'll help. Count me in! <laughs> Eric. Oh, Bo Lynn, my goodness, oh. So I'm guessing the breakup with Eska didn't go well. I'm pretty sure the guy is supposed to give the girl the betrothal necklace. Oh. I guess Eska didn't get the memo. Look, the only way to deal with crazy women is to lie big and leave fast. <laughs> Lucky for you, Varric's got your back. Now, gather around Ping Ping. Let's talk plan. <laughs> Gather around Ping Ping. I love Varric. <laughs> Still have tears in my eyes about Boomy and Aang. Yeah, our girl's back in action. I've been missing me some Asami. I, I really Captain. needed that. Even if it's a little bit. Where is he? I knew you were coming. I'm sorry, Cora. You'll never see your father again. Explain that, please. Where's my father? On a ship headed to the Northern Tribe. He'll serve out his sentence there. He's trying to get you to go to the North. Bring him back, or I'm taking you out and the rest of your army. As the Avatar, you must remain neutral, or our tribes will never find unity. You don't want unity. You want power. All I've ever wanted is to help you realize your destiny. If you start a war, the Dark Spirits will annihilate the South. I'm done being manipulated by you. Good for you. You are going to bring my father back, then you and your troops will return to the north. And why would I do that? Because you still need me to open the northern portal. Yep. No, I don't. Oh. Hit him with the chi blocker, Asami. If we get to Varric's boat, we can still save your father. Oh my god. He's horrible! Sneak! What we're gonna call him now? Snake. Oh God, Bolin. Oh God. Oh God. You have a license for that animal? Mm. Uh, you fellas seen a traveling circus come through here? Julie, do the thing. Do the thing. I remember the platypus bear pooping out an egg. This is just great. Pooping out money. Pooping out money for a bribe. Driving a ship. Where's your dad? On a ship headed north. Think we can catch up to it? Sure. Once you get us past our friends from the north. Here you go, girl. If only we had a plane to get me close to those ships, I... Uh, Asami! Plane? Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, wow! That was why awesome. A plane on your boat? In case the boat sinks, of course. Huh. But there's no runway. How are we supposed to take off? Julie! Take a note. <laughs> Build runway. <laughs> Cora, you got some air. Throw it up. Oh, Asami looking hot in those goggles, girl. Now! Whoosh! Oh, I expected air, not fire. Fighter jet. There you go. <laughs> Okay, but girl, remember, you can't die when you're in the Avatar state, so be careful. You can die in the Avatar state. We don't want you to die in the Avatar state. Bad news. I don't know if the plane was necessary for all of that, but I enjoyed the whole sequence. You are never gonna believe this. <laughs> There's a platypus bear driving that boat! <laughs> there! My dad's on that ship! Jump! Oh! Maybe we need to work on our landings a little bit. Whoa, whoa, cleared the deck. Dang, Cora. Where are the prisoners? Cora, this is crazy. You promised me you wouldn't do anything rash. I had to. I'll explain later. No, tell him now. Tell him about Unalak now. That was quite the sequence there. Got my heart racing. Sweetie, you're okay. I was so worried. Do you have something you want to say to your sister? Sorry we made fun of you. Want to play airball? Sure. Yeah! Just like that. I wanted to apologize for how I acted yesterday. I've worked so hard to celebrate Dad's legacy that I may have overlooked the parts of him that were less than ideal. Yep. And 
We're sorry for dumping our frustrations with Dad out on you. I thought you two might want to see this. Mom gave it to me before we left. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's one happy family. I love that picture. <laughs> My own brother betrayed me. Yeah. And our entire tribe. It's time to put my brother in his place. You have our support, Chief Tonrock. Chief Tonrock. I'll be proud to fight alongside you, Dad. No, Cora. I can help. The get best recruit way for other you to help nations. Is by getting the President of the United Republic on our side. I'll get you all the help you need. So, United Forces, am I going to get some more General Iroh? Huh? Huh? I love you, Dad. I love you, too. Okay, and I'm happy that Cora and her father are not mad at each other anymore. I really need to thank you, Cora. For what? I started a civil war. Exactly. Now Esk and I are officially broken up. Oop, Took a war. Like we have company. Uh oh. What is that? Is that Eska? <gasps> Show is. Oh. That would be my darling Eska. Is this thing fast enough to get away from my crazy water bedding ex girlfriend? Why do you think I built this boat? <laughs> Okay, so Unalak, snake, 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 snake. From the end of the first episode, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. At first I was like, maybe he really does want to unite these tribes. Oh, no, 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 no. He was playing the long game. The fact that he planned the barbarians to attack, that he said go into the forest just to get his brother out of the way. <sighs> I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't think anyone likes him. Uh, I hate him. I hate him. But you know who I love? <laughs> I love Varric. I love Varric. I thought I was going to like him at least. <laughs> He's so flamboyant and eccentric and weird and kooky. And I love that for me. <laughs> and it was funny because I was just like, man, that platypus bear is really sticking out like... Like, because you can tell, like, stuff that's, like, the background animation-wise and stuff that is, like, set to move. And I was like, that platypus bear, like, looks, like, really weird just sticking out there. And I was like, is he inside of that? That was, that was delicious. That was so good. Oh, my gosh. I adore Varric. Um, it just because he's kooky and, and, and eccentric and weird and all those things, but like he turns out to be like a really great character to have on hand. That escape, the the plane, although <laughs> I thought Korra was gonna use wind to get them up. They used firepower. Better solution than what I had. It really was. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy Varric. Um, and I didn't realize that he was um, part of the Southern Water tribe. I thought he was just there for the festival or something because, um, like, he was doing the whole floating thing and, and all that. Like, I thought, like, you know, it was kind of something a little um, cheeky. But the fact that he is part of the Southern Water tribe and he was heading up the rebellion with Tonrock, I think, uh, was an uh, interesting dynamic. One, because I don't know if I would have thought Varric was the guy that, you know, uh, you go to, to for help with that, but he's very helpful. The rebellion that he staged to take over uh, Unalak, I'm, obviously Unalak knew it was coming, and the, the bribe to the judge and, you know, keeping everything quiet and all that, like, I just hate Unalak. And, like, you know, Cora was like, oh, you need me to open up the portal in the Northern Water Tribe. And he's like, no, I don't. And I was like, oh, well, there took, like, any, like, uh, any negotiating that we could have done, gone. Um, so, and, and he said something about traveling from the north to the south quicker. I don't know if that's, like, to open up, like, a trade route so they can, you know, uh, move goods faster in a way of, like, like capitalistic rather than, um, you know it being just convenient. Um, yep, don't like Gunalak. And it really is interesting that we had, like, you know, uh, for sure, the Fire Nation was set to be the bad guys in Avatar The Last Airbender. And then you got to know people from the Fire Nation and, and, and people that were hurt by people from the Fire Nation. And so you had this one group of people that were bad. And here you have people that are of the same tribe 
that are are fighting for power. One just to be left alone, and the other one trying to take over. Um, and like I could kind of see that manipulation at the end of the second episode, and I was like, oh no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to help with that. I totally would be part of the rebellion, one hundred percent. I would not be. I'd be staging coups. I'd be trying any way that I could get the, the Northern Water Tribe out of there. But you know, force isn't always the answer, and I know the United Forces are definitely going to come with force. Um, but I, I, I don't know if it's just getting rid of Unalak and that opens up something, but I, I definitely think that there's still the spirit part of that that we have to worry about. We don't want there to be angry spirits and, and we do want that to be restored, but I don't know, I don't quite know if it's necessary right now. Like, like those angry spirits could have been just part of traveling the sea for all I know. I mean, we didn't see them in Avatar. That doesn't mean that we're not going to see them here. So, you know, I don't know if that's like just, um, just like a, a little caveat, like that, that Unalak's like, oh, and we can fix this, but I ultimately want power for both the North and the South. And of course, if he opens up the portal and they can go in between those portals, uh, uh, quicker, easier, like I said, Trade routes, uh, selling goods, all that stuff, that does make him incredibly powerful. Having trade routes that you can instantaneously instantaneously be from the north to the south or south or north, I don't know if that's the case. Like, that's what I got from what he said. But, like, that does make you a very powerful person. Controlling trade routes has always shown to make you a very powerful person. Now, um, Bolin, oh, boy, is he a dumb cabbage. I, <laughs> He's just... I adore him. I think he's the sweetest, but boy, is he dumb as a rock. Boy, is he dumb as a rock. <laughs> he can deliver some sick burns for sure. But uh, yeah, the the whole thing with uh, Eska, ooh, <laughs> her makeup running in the water and like her evil look and she's like coming to get him. Like I appreciate those moments because it definitely is a uh, comedic relief, but um, like the collar, I know it's a betrothal necklace. Immediately, I thought of like a collar. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And and like the, it's almost like keeping him like a pet, and like his hair and like the robes and even a babu. <laughs> okay, look, it's hilarious. But like, let's let's not. That's abuse. That's abusive. That is harmful to Bolin. Um, him being treated that way, not being heard, and her, you know, pushing harder and harder and harder. Um, you know, he expressed interest because she was mysterious and attractive and then found out real quick that she was just not the right person for him. And I think maybe he needs to learn <laughs> to get to know somebody. And it's really funny because I'm just now thinking back in the first season when I said I was just like, oh, you know, Bolin knows how to pick them. No wonder people left little happy, like, funny crying emojis in the comments like, oh, yeah, he sure does. And I was like, oh, I get it now. I get it now. I'm not a fan of Eska, but it's uh, definitely interesting. The uh, I don't even want to call it a relationship because that's not a relationship. They are not relating whatsoever. Um, it's 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 toxic. And wow. I feel like she, not that I feel like she could kill him, but like, you know, him just being like, I don't have feelings for you other than fear. And that's just not what I want to build a relationship on. Um, Mako, while he's right, um, I don't know if he knows how to handle someone like Eska. I don't know if he's ever been in the situation to handle someone like Eska. Um, but, you know, Bolin assuming that like when Mako breaks up with Korra, like how hard it's going to be, he was like, geez. <laughs> And I do like that, like, Asami isn't, like, um, they're not, like, having shots of her, like, having, like, a sad face or a hurt face anymore. She's got a, she's got her own focus. She ain't got no time for some relationship drama. So I, I really like that, like, even though, like, they could bring back the love triangle crap, um, that, like, that's, like, her main focus isn't, like, trying to get Mako back because... She ain't got time for that. She is a businesswoman. She has got a corporation to run. She has got some money to make and planes to fly and badassery all around to perform. So, um, yeah. Whatever. Um, but definitely Korra. I, the, the whole Civil War dynamic that we were seeing throughout the entire two episodes, whether it is between the two tribes, whether it's sibling rivalry, the Civil War between her and her dad, it's. I like that they like really made it to where it was families in trouble. And 
I, I, I get really frustrated with Cora, um, with the pouting and her being a brat, but at the same time, I understand where she's coming from again, being kind of kept in that bubble and them admitting that that's what they were doing. But I do like that the mother, that her mother pointed out, like, you know, we were just going to have a normal life and then you're the avatar and that's not possible. And she wanted to have a normal life for as long as possible. Not only will that benefit Korra, because Aang didn't get to have a family like that. Like he he had Monk Gyatso and he had the rest of the monks and, and the kids at the temple, but, you know, he didn't have... So that's... <laughs> I'm going to get into that as well, but he didn't have that fatherly figure helping him grow up. He had to just find his own way. And she got to have a fatherly figure. She got to have parents that cared about her and, and kept her from, you know, uh, going off to be the avatar when she was 12, like Aang did, even though that's not, that wasn't his intention. Now, if you think about Aang, he didn't have a father that like brought him up. Like he was 12 when he got trapped in the iceberg. He had Monk Gyatso, but like Monk Gyatso was not his father. For all intents and purposes, he was. But, like, it wasn't enough. And so Aang kind of had to grow up real quick. And, and he didn't have the opportunity to be fathered to learn how to do that. You know, what he knew how to do was trained to be an airbender. And that's what he did with Tenzin. And that's why Tenzin got all the attention that he did was because that's the only thing Aang probably knew how to do. He didn't know how to train a waterbender. He didn't know what to do with someone that was normal, even though that is totally Katara and Sokka right there. But, you know, like he is used to them being, you know, people that can handle them, their lives on their own and, and themselves. And that's really sad. It gives you an insight on the father that Aang was, but also, you know, it, it, it creates a lot of sympathy for the kids, but also for Aang, like what he was robbed of by not having, you know, a, a life in the temple. Like he, I guess they start training at 16 for uh, uh, the Avatar. So he had at least four more years where he should have just been a kid and and had Monk Gyatso, you know, raising him and, and having that experience and, and feeling like he had a fatherly relationship. Um, I have no doubt that Katara's father, one, took Aang in with open arms and, and tr tried to probably be fatherly to him. But, you know, Aang had just saved the world. He's best friends with the Fire Lord. You know, he's the Avatar. Like, can you father the Avatar? I don't know. So I feel really bad for, for Bumi and Kaya, but I also feel bad for Aang. And, you know, Tenzin has this idealized, you know, vision of what his childhood was. And I think a lot of people do that. I, I don't think that, I mean, it's easier to remember the good than it is the bad most of the time. Um, and, you know, like, I, I understand Kaya and Bumi being a little bitter because the vision that Tenzin has of his father is not the vision that they had. It's not their experience. And that's really sad because I'm sure Ng loved them, but he probably didn't know what to do with them either. And knowing that Tenzin and, and Bumi didn't come back after Ng died to help take care of Katara. I don't think Katara needed someone to take care of her like per se, but she was probably heartbroken. She probably needed somebody there for her that, you know, loved her, showed her how much they cared because, you know, the love of her life had just passed away. Like, that's heartbreaking. I also would say Katara is a tough cookie, so they only probably had to be there for like a week or two, maybe a month tops. I don't know. I don't, it probably would have made more sense for Kaya to go because she's a waterbender. Um, and seeing the difference between having waterbender siblings and non-bending sibling, you know, like poor Boomy, like definitely was just like, like, do it this way and like, it'll be faster. And they're like, oh, sure was. And, you know, him falling. And, you know, I think it's probably really hard to keep up with bending siblings. And, and it definitely is. Uh, and I don't know if Rohan is a bender necessarily. I think we'll find out. But I think if Rohan isn't a bender, Pema will definitely be giving way more attention to Rohan because there's something that, like, she can teach him to where, like, you know, the kids, like, you know, they, I don't, I think they are are connected more with their father because of the airbending. And I love that we got Iki and, and Tenzin sitting with the baby bisons having tea time and talking about their sibling differences and, and, and like how hard it is. But I love that Iki, you know, as soon as she gets back and, and the kids apologize, she's just like, oh, hey, let's go play. That's, that's very childlike. And that is, that is what it's kind of supposed to be is like, you have your moments, but you know, you don't dwell on them. And I think that that taught Tenzin not to dwell on on the, I don't want to say the anger, because he didn't have anger towards his siblings, but, you know, the, the sibling grief that we give each other. 
you know, he had to get over it. He had to just be like, hey, you know what? There's truth in what you guys said. And Boomy in the scene of him talking to Aang and saying, like, I hope that I made you proud and I'm so sorry that, like, I wasn't an airbender like you wanted me to be. Whew. Whew. That is painful. I mean, I can't imagine Katara and Aang's first child not being a bender at all. The Avatar, not only that, two benders having a baby, but then, like, the Avatar son not being able to bend. I think that, like, like Sokka, it teaches you ways of doing things differently. And, and you know, you have to rely more on your ingenuity and your smarts rather than you do, you know, being able to physically bend. This is, these were two great episodes. I really liked these episodes. Um, I, I will say that I thought I was kind of getting a little annoyed um, with Bolin and his objections and stuff like that. Like, so there's sometimes where I'm just like, we don't, we don't need comic relief right now. Um, but other than that, like, the, these episodes were solid. I really liked them. I really liked them a lot. And, you know, Katara having her bratty moments just to apologize to her parents and seeing where, you know, they were coming from and, and like really telling her dad, like, I love you so much. And I, I feel like we all needed that because, you know, Katara arguing with Hakoda, I was so glad that it only went on for one episode because I was like, I don't want episodes of this. I really don't. I don't, I don't like when they prolong uh, arguing storylines. Like I like when they're resolved or at least that there's growth from them or like, it's like, okay, we just things differently, agree to disagree. Let's, let's just leave it be, you know, but like an ongoing feud or an ongoing anger, uh, I'm not really a fan of. So I'm glad that we seem to have that resolved, but you know, uh, Tonrock can't go back to the Southern water tribe. So we are uh, on our way to the United forces and, uh, we get to see, uh, my boyfriend, Iroh. Mm -hmm. He's so cute. And he's powerful, and he's got an amazing jawline, and he sounds like Zuko. Almost the best of all the good worlds. We just need him to, like, recite something that Uncle Iroh would say. Like something, or maybe him just drinking tea, you know. The Iroh legacy continues. It would be a beautiful thing. Uh, I would love that. So, guys, uh, remember that the full-length reactions are available on my Patreon. Uh, in up to four episodes early, that's two reactions. And remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Uh, definitely... The, the the sibling stuff, the, the civil wars that were happening in the families, I think, are far more interesting than what's happening between the two tribes. But um, I want to see Unalak get his. I want to see Varric doing Varric things. Uh, the, the, the do the thing. I was cool before I knew it. Um, maybe... <laughs> I feel like when people say that they're cool, they're not really cool. <laughs> so I take it back. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm 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 liking this season. Um, I'm not sure uh, what what isn't liked about season two because so far I'm digging it. Uh, and 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 now with the United Forces, it's just getting more and more. The world's getting bigger and bigger, and going to the air temples, we're just seeing more and we're experiencing more. Because if we had to stay in Republic City, I think I probably would have lost my mind. And if we were staying in the Water Tribes, I think I also would have lost my mind. I think that's something that I really liked about Avatar was like going from place to place to place. There was new places all the time. That's what I like about like space shows is visiting different planets and different cultures and different beings. Space is a lot different than this. I get that. But like, that's, that's the part that I, I really like. I'm like, Ooh, something new and shiny. Yay. So guys, I'm excited for the next couple episodes. Come back here. And in the meantime, I'll see ya.